Stock market is dumping again. Bitcoin seemingly stable. Altcoins bouncing across the board. People talking about World War III in Russia. We have a lot to talk about today, guys. Let us go. Let's go. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, please phone a friend, tell them to subscribe to the channel because all of you guys are already subscribed. Uh, and then aggressively karate chop the like button like this. Those aren't even karate chops. That's just like a series of vertical slaps. Do that, though. Do that into your button do that into your like button yeah i'm looking at what you guys got to say let's go that's dope let's go that's dope let's go that's dope let's go that's dope, that's dope. dope. see this Did you see this this is funny what a stupid son of a bitch biden just called someone a stupid son of a bitch the other day with a hot mic shit's dope see that pretty funny uh, instructions unclear, destroyed my keyboard. That's a you problem, not a me problem, buddy. Uh, greets from Germany. I'm assuming that's a funny way of typing Germany. Funny way of doing it. What a stupid son of a bitch. That's what I said. It's amazing. <clears throat> I get the newsletter. It's going to be a survival guide over the next six months. It's dope. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, today, uh, today was a deep, deep, deep dive. I was up at like four o'clock in the morning and I just kept writing and couldn't keep stop writing in the newsletter. It There's a lot. It's a lot. Even for me today, I was like that. That's a lot. I hope people like to read words because it's a lot, a lot of words. Uh, yeah. And I shared a lot of altcoin charts today, actually with the caveat. I was like, I'm not saying these are going to go up. I'm just showing you where there's a lot of coins that are at a major, major mega key support right now. If they lose it, be gone. If you're into taking a shot, then have fun for that. If you don't subscribe to the newsletter, what are you even doing really? It's a good question. Valid question. What are you even really doing? So guys, uh, yeah, let's, let's just dig in. Let's just dig in right now. So the first thing, this isn't news, but it's just something that keeps crossing my mind and it's bothering me. And I want to talk to you guys about it. Seeing a lot of this and I find it, uh, also in myself, of course, right? So we keep talking about the Fed, right? Fed policy. What is the Fed going to do? And secretly kind of, you know, everyone's like, I hope that they're dovish. I hope they're not going to raise rates that much uh, because then assets could continue to go up, right? If the Fed takes major action against inflation, then it's very likely that Bitcoin and other asset prices will dip. But here you go. This is my original tweet. This is the part of the story when everyone who is vehemently opposed to money printing sees what happens when the money printer slows down and secretly hopes for more money printing. Right? We talked about this before. Kind of a dilemma though, right? If you're like a super Bitcoin maximalist and your entire premise for buying and holding Bitcoin is governments are responsible. By the way, they are. There's a thought experiment. They are. Uh, inflation will always be out of control, will always be an issue, and that's why we hold Bitcoin. Shouldn't you intellectually be like, oh, good, the Fed is going to tighten and get inflation under control, right? As I said, this is where the rubber meets the road on principles versus self-interest. Your self-interest says, let them print money out of control. My net worth will go up. But in theory, shouldn't you be happy that they're going to attempt Attempt to manage inflation. As I went on to say here, it's a thought experiment. We know that governments can never stop printing money and that inflation is here to stay at varying levels. If they get rid of inflation, we get deflation, we get depression. They're not going to let that happen. But there's a clear desire by most to see the Fed take a dovish tone this week to keep markets from crashing. I believe that Bitcoin wins regardless. Fiat money is destined to fail. But anyone who rails aggressively against money printing and is then unhappy when the government tries to control it is being intellectually dishonest about what they want which is for the number to go up. Kind of a tough position, guys, don't you think? Yeah, here you go. Greatest threat to Bitcoin is good governance, right? 
want your government to behave uh, behave well and take care of its citizens, that's actually bad for Bitcoin, right? So there's this sort of slight cognitive dissonance where you're like, I want Bitcoin to be global currency of the world, but not really thinking about what the world looks like where things collapse bad enough for Bitcoin to become the global currency. I'm going to be honest. I don't want Bitcoin to become the global currency of the world. I want governments to become slightly more responsible for Bitcoin to still be a store of value and continue to appreciate and to live in harmony. I don't think that will necessarily happen, but I definitely don't want to live in Mad Max trying to like get my goons to protect my truck when I drive to Gastown just because I'm the dude in the neighborhood with the most Bitcoin. Pretty stank. Pretty stank. I agree it's not possible. Government won't take care of people ever, but it's important and you're already seeing it. Like we're literally like five minutes into the government even admitting inflation is a problem and trying to deal with it. And people are already like, oh, oh shit. Maybe that printing was, was kind of good. Maybe that printing was kind of good. Anyways, let's continue on. This is something to think about. I, just something to think about because it made, when as I think about these things, it makes me address my own biases and my own belief systems. Right. And you should you should probably entertain the same. Right. <clears throat> Anyways, next in shocking news that you're never going to believe because it's insane that you could ever believe this. Russia finance minister official calls for crypto regulation, not restriction. Oh, my God. I tweeted this earlier. Can we get a ban on bans? Can we get a ban on news about bans? These countries, China eventually, after 15 years of going back and forth, okay, it wasn't 15 years, I know, about bans, they finally did a ban. India, banning, unbanning, unbanning, banning, banning, unbanning, banning, 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 right? The other day, as I told you, this was just the head of the central bank saying we should do this. I, it was being reported as news that it was going to happen. I said, probably not going to happen. Well, now the finance ministry is saying maybe we'll regulate it, not restrict it. Kind of makes you feel like maybe Russia wanted to buy the dip. Like just a little dip. Put out some band news, price goes down, cop some at 10% discount, sling that shit in Ukraine, keep it moving. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So just so you know, Russia right now, equally likely to regulate as to ban and frankly, probably more likely to do jack shit except for talk. That's what we do. But let's dive into Bitcoin. Bitcoin recovers to 36K. Woo, strike that out. Made it over 37. Amid mixed response from traders, Polkadot leads altcoin gains. Crypto market staged a brief recovery ahead of Wednesday's Federal Reserve meeting. The meeting's actually today and tomorrow, but Powell will speak. We'll speak tomorrow. So obviously we saw some gains across the board. You were all there. You all know that yesterday was probably like my biggest buying day. Equities as well, even though I expected them to dump again today, which I haven't checked if they still are. But yeah, I like buying very large dips with a very long term time horizon. But yeah, here we are still talking about this crypto coins and tokens shown to be highly sensitive to equity prices propelled upward on a wave of cheap and easy money. Cheap and easy money uh, would be a cool name for a band. Right. And the determinate everybody's coping here, to be clear. Every quote is cope and people like trying to figure out what the hell means things mean. But here you go. Rebound in Bitcoin and positive dynamics of the crypto market are more correctly attributed to technical factors. Yeah, because we don't have fundamentals. Everyone knows that. Crypto investors are exiting altcoins to more liquid BTC, forming temporary bounces, but nothing more. That, that's literally how Bitcoin dominance works and how we use it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, the stronger Bitcoin gets, the more people who don't have dry powder on the sidelines FOMO out of their alts to get into Bitcoin. It's a washing machine of liquidity. We all know that. We all know that. We all know that. But further caution is still in the cards for Bitcoin investors. Without support from the stock markets, these levels may not hold for long either. So like every technical analyst, analyst, including myself, could go up, could go down, could go sideways, don't know. All we know for a fact, though, is that yesterday, stocks crashed at the open, Bitcoin went up. So let's, top, let's stop for now talking about that correlation. Then stocks had a historic day, biggest comeback in history. And Bitcoin just chilled, kind of went sideways. Then overnight, stocks dumped into futures and into the morning. 
and Bitcoin was stable. So maybe we'll just stop talking about that. We'll stop talking about it. But here you go. Bitcoin climbs more than 10% following an extraordinary recovery in U.S. equities. Bitcoin's price fell to $32.99 on Coinbase during Monday trade and closed at $36. Meanwhile, U.S. equities markets fell sharply before recovering near the end of the trading session. That was historic price action yesterday. Biggest intraday gain since March 19th of 2020 for stocks, but actually closed the biggest gap in history from trough to peak. Biggest ever. And it was the second largest volume day I, ever, I could find for QQQ ever, 2008 being the other one. But we know what happened after that high volume in 2008. Markets dumped. And we also know what happened after March 19th, right? March 19th, crypto bottomed in March 12th, 2020. The stock market didn't bottom till March 23rd. March 19th had a huge candle like this, massive buying off the lows, filled it up, and then crashed for four more days. In fact, we were off this morning by about 250 on the Dow from a much higher level. That day, March 20th, was down 500 points on the Dow from a much lower level, so a much higher percentage. So it's actually kind of a bearish sort of thing when you see a candle like that, uh, as we did yesterday, because they tend to historically be followed up, at least temporarily, by more selling. And this is why, in this case, who was selling at the open, right? We saw Friday was terrible, weekend was chill, and then the second people were available to sell stocks, we saw this massive gap down and a huge push through the first half of the day. Who do you think it was? Who do you think it was? Retail. Throwing up the white flag, retail investors dump stocks at Monday's open. Retail, short-term money, speculators capitulated. They had all weekend to think about it. Friday was bad. 200 MA broke. All weekend to go, what should I do on Monday morning? Literally all just set sell orders and market sold everything they had. The first chance they got the minute the market opened right into the hands of smart money at the bottom, who then massively pumped up the market. Shocking, guys. Shocking. No, it's not shocking. That's sarcasm. It's not shocking at all. This was them, right? Here, I don't have the... Now I don't even have the clip, but here. Play it. What a stupid son of a bitch. What a stupid son of a bitch. He's talking about retail. He's talking about retail. Stupid son of a bitch. No, he's not really. He's not really. You're not necessarily stupid. Like I said, it can go down the next day. But this is exactly what happened. I mean, retail sold in record numbers. Let's take a look at the market now. Yeah, there's that mega massive candle yesterday and today selling pressure, but bouncing. I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see this thing finally get back above the 200 MA today, but we will see. And QQQ, as I said, this is the uh, tracks the NASDAQ. There you go. That volume. Look at it. Can't find this year, last year, all the years. Got to go back. It's not even as big. Yeah, got to go way back in time to find that much volume of buying on QQQ. People trying to get into the NASDAQ. For real, for real buying here. But the bottom line here is that stocks going to do what they're going to do. Bitcoin has not been doing what stocks are doing this week. So I don't want to hear about that. Of course, MicroStrategy will continue buying Bitcoin unfazed by market plummeting. Report, the business intelligence company strategy is buy and hold. CFO Fong Lei said, is that him? When's the last time you saw a market MicroStrategy article that wasn't Michael Saylor's face? That kind of threw me off. And what is this effect? Did you tie-dye your face? Am I supposed to believe that the photographer was on acid and that transferred through his camera? I don't understand. Why did they do this to his face? Anyways, yeah, they're going to buy and hold. He confirmed it. They keep buying. They're going to stay buying. We know that they're giga extra mega chads and they're going to do that. Our strategy with Bitcoin has been to buy and hold. So to the extent we have excess cash flows or we find other ways to raise money, we continue to put it into Bitcoin. That's the comment. There you go. Dad, this is the comment. He's in the metaverse. That's right. This is Fong Lee in the metaverse. 
Uh, printer was low on toner, and then they took a picture of the printout and they put it on there. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, 1984 color TV. This is like the TV that I watched the movie Poltergeist on. Looked like that. Yeah. You guys ever, uh, you guys know about Poltergeist? You know about that? Yeah. I'm looking at your, uh, looking at your comments over here. Let's, let's look at some shirts, shirts, shirts. I mean, Bitcoin's still trading at 36,515. Weekly candle irrelevant for now, but damn, girls, girl, we would love to see it actually close like that. That's dope. Right? If we could see that, woo! Yeah. Right there, right? We're above the close. We're trading up on the week. Great candle with a nice, nice wick down. If we can close up higher, turn this into a cam, to turn this into a uh, hammer candle. Right now, it's kind of a high top spinning, high top spinning wave, which was a kind of shoe in the 80s. Also, the haircut that kid from Kid and Play had. But looking pretty good here. Looking pretty good here. But let's uh, keep going. Oh, I wanted to mention this just before the next chart. CNBC's Jim Cramer. <sighs> Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer. Super son of a bitch. Sorry, Jim. I like him. Jimmy Chill. But, yo, J- Jim Cramer's been getting the heat. He's been getting the business end of crypto Twitter's big stick for the last few days. This dude sent a tweet the other day that said, I have a feeling a lot of money is going to flow into stocks from crypto. Join my paid group. And I'll tell you why. For real. For real. He literally said that. What a stupid son of a bitch. Right. He, he literally said it. And then he followed up. I think last night he did like one of his calls and he sent a tweet that was like, I'm about to share everything you need to know about cryptocurrencies. Sign on. My God, bro. You don't know shit. You don't know shit. You don't know shit. We all know that. But anyways, he now says he thinks the sell off is over. He still owns some ETH. He's interested in buying, especially if it goes down more. Guy has no plan. No plan. When the charts are interpreted by Tom DeMarc, that's TV sequential. That's why I'm mentioning this. Say that both Bitcoin and Ethereum could be looking at downside trend exhaustion bottoms this week. If not today, I think you need to take him seriously. Could happen this week. To me, that said, it might be too late to sell. I need to consider buying. I know I am, especially if we get a final leg down. So like you buying or you waiting to buy lower which might not happen and then you won't buy and you'll fumble in at the top like a retail jack jack wagon i don't even know what a jack wagon is yeah he's talking about td sequential guys i showed you here it is on the weekly here's td sequential on the weekly if it'll load massive buy nine right there this can go 13 candles we're on the 11th this is a massive reversal signal oh by the way you had one here too right and wasn't really a reversal but that was at 35 it went back down eventually did reverse. We don't get them very often. I'm not a big fan of this. uh, Get you wrecked trading it more times than not. But we also now have a buy nine on the daily. On the daily. Daily. Scott, is it a plan to just buy whenever I feel I can hold? That's the best plan there is, my friend. Best plan there is. Yeah, Jim Cramer wears a bro man's ear. Probably. Probably. Uh, yeah. I'm just reading your comments. Sorry. I get I get very dis- dis- distracted. Can't choose between life and death when dealing with what's in between. Poltergeist. I was terrified by that movie, that tree that now looks so fake. When you look back, at it, it's so fake. But I was terrified that my tree was going to come in my window and get me. And anytime the TV went to like fuzz. You remember when TV wasn't 24 hours and like literally like just went off for like 12 hours? <sighs> Play the national anthem. That's my childhood. Anyways, still digging into the Bitcoin chart. Guys, major resistance at 37,300 from this swing low. I'm still long, by the way. I went long right after the stream in the morning. ETH too. Uh, But got to get above this. Then we got to get above this. Then we got to get above this just to start talking about any bullishness. So as encouraging as it was, this was the biggest volume daily candle since the major dump in December. Right? We still got to see follow through. 
Gotta see some following through of the following through. But you guys know what I like. Oh, girl, you know what I like. That four-hour bullish divergence from oversold. It's there on the four. It confirmed on the six. It confirmed on the 12. Have fun staying smart if you played that, right? And now, more importantly, we have invalidated any hidden bearish divergence that could have happened there by getting above 36,293, as I was disgusting. Yeah. <clears throat> Were you allowed to watch Poltergeist in 1982, Scott? Weren't you like seven? I probably watched it. I was like, yeah, I was like six or seven. I probably watched it when I was like eight or nine because like I had a babysitter who used to show me fucked up shit when I was a kid. He, he could be here. Could be in the comments. Robert McCarthy, I, I know you, buddy. He's, sometimes we interact on Twitter and stuff. Sometimes he hangs out. But yeah, he, uh, yeah, my lungs still open. But yeah, he used to like, he like let us watch porkies and stuff when I was a little kid and there were like boobs and, and sex things and all, and all that corrupted my mind. But yeah, it made me watch scary movies. And guys, for anyone who was trading the CME gap, Robert McCarthy, that guy, what a legend. What a legend. Uh, yeah, see so guys, when we were kids, we had to like, uh, no, he wasn't a Manny. He wasn't a Manny. He was actually on the high school football team and like he was like a freshman in college and my brother was in like fifth grade and I was in like first or second. I don't know, man. But yeah, we watched. Yeah. You guys don't know about Porky's. You literally missed out on life. No, he didn't make me watch Dirty Dancing. That I could watch that by myself. He didn't want me to turn out lame. He wanted me to be awesome. Hmm. Anyways, CME gap that we've been talking about since, I don't know, July, round 32, filled almost to the penny. That's pretty cool. Oh, man. Yeah. So, uh, Scott, my kids and their friends failed a puzzle room because they couldn't figure out a rotary phone. Literally, they know their dad called 1-800-HOT-GIRLS on a rotary. Yeah, you probably called Miss Cleo too, bud. Get your psychic friends with Dion Warwick. And guys, man, people missed out on all the amazing things that happened uh, when we were kids. Poltergeist, Porkies. It's fucked up. Pretty fucked up. Now kids just like go on these internets and they just like look up the most like crazy wild stuff. I've talked about this, but like if I wanted to see a naked girl, it was like either Robert McCarthy um, hooked me up with Porky's when my parents were at dinner with no cell phone. So like there was an emergency. Have fun not knowing about your kids. Uh, call the restaurant. You remember that shit? They, your parents would leave a note that said, call the restaurant if there's a problem. Yeah, your kids are seeing too many boobs. Um, yeah, and that, or I had to like go find a magazine. I had to go find a magazine with a naked girl and be like, oh, there's a picture of a naked person. Yeah, exactly. Playboy. Exactly right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, boobs. Seeing a boob uh, when I was a kid, and I was like uh, winning a scavenger hunt or the lottery or something. Wasn't a thing. Anyways, let's continue on with the news. Bank of America says a digital U.S. dollar is inevitable. Yeah, no shit. No shit. But here you go. The U.S. will likely move forward with its own digital currency with issuance occurring between 2025 and 2030. Uh, have y'all seen what stable coins are doing? Because I think you might be a little late to that party. They're going to be so late to that party. They're going to be like, bro, it was a, your birthday in 2024? Shit. I showed up in 2027. Is the DJ still here? Y'all got open bar or what? Right? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. But we all know that a digital, central bank digital currency is inevitable. The Fed finally just wrote a paper on it. But the U.S. government in classic U.S. government fashion is going to take like seven years to figure out what some nerds in a basement in their teen years like could figure out already. Like, guys, we already have stable coins. Get after it. Here's some shit. Ex Goldman CEO Lloyd Blankfein says crypto is happening despite plunge in digital assets. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Guys, inflation is happening. Oh, they admitted it. Yeah, we know crypto is happening. Thanks. But this guy, Lloyd Blankfein, arguably probably one of the most powerful human beings in the world, especially when he was the CEO of Goldman. Because you know that, like, when like the treasury and the fed and all these people, like when they need to know like what's up, they call in the team from Goldman. They're like, guys, tell us, tell us what we need to do for wall street. Come on, hook it up, hook it up. Right. But he says, look, my view, he did say, look, my view of it is evolving. 
strong opinions loosely held. Did you guys see Northman Trader Sven Heinrich, I think? I'm going to have him on the podcast. I love that guy on Twitter. In February, he was like, Bitcoin shit of 2021. Yet he wrote like a long form paper uh, the other day that was like why he's a Bitcoiner now. Strong opinions loosely held. When you're pre presented with new information, God forbid, you jack wagons, you update your opinion. Yeah. I know it's crazy because people are political and they just stay stuck in their ways forever, but that's what Lloyd did here. Lloyd, Lloyd Christmas. Lloyd Christmas, ex Goldman CEO. I'll put another shrimp on the Bobby. Samsonite Swanson was way off. Look, my views of it is evolving, Blank Fine says. I can't predict the future, but I think it's a big thing to be able to predict the present, like what is happening. And I look at the crypto. I look at the crypto. Looking at that crypto. Just look at it. It's happening. Right? He said, it's lost a lot of value, but at a point where it's trillions of dollars of value contributing to it and the whole ecosystem's growing around it, he said... I don't know. These are pretty uh, vague crap, crap quotes. He said, of course, we have the benefit of instantaneous transfer and reduction of credit risk and all the benefits of blockchain. I may be skeptical, but I'm also pragmatic about it. And so guess what? I would certainly want to have an oar in that water. That's what he said. He's talking about sex. He was actually looking at a girl when he said that. I want to get my oar in that water. <clears throat> No, he was talking about crypto. He was still talking about crypto. But yeah, guys, they're all coming around. Speaking of people with billions of dollars who have a lot of uh, who have a lot of power, we landed on the moon. Speaking of uh, people who have a lot of money, Elon Musk in the McDonald's meme trend says he will eat a happy meal on TV if Dogecoin accepted. Did you see guys see that McDonald's had this tweet that said, uh, "How are the people running crypto Twitter accounts doing?" Like, it was an amazing tweet. Everyone's funny. Naibu Kaylee. Everyone's on the, like, Sailor McDonald's hat. Naib, Naib, President of El Salvador, Naib, McDonald's outfit, right? The McDonald's meme is very powerful um, and funny. And they're capitalizing on it. So they tweeted, how are the people running crypto Twitter accounts doing? Like, what are we at? Like, we have, like, agencies running our accounts. How, how's crypto Twitter doing? Would it work better? The people running crypto, crypto Twitter accounts, like what their own social media expert who's running McDonald's account thought that way when they decided to tweet at us. But it was funny. And Elon Musk jumped in and said that he would eat a, eat a McDonald's Happy Meal on TV, I think he said. I'll eat a Happy Meal on TV if you accept Dogecoin. Pretty funny. Probably, I will eat a Happy Meal on TV if McDonald's accepts Dogecoin. By the way, I'm sure that this will be reported by tomorrow. It'll be like, Elon Musk buys ownership stake in McDonald's. Uh, Dogecoin going to be accepted as global world currency. It happens. It's news. Uh, there's someone doing some scammy shit over here. Let me get rid of that. Do we own any Doge? Not anymore. Long gone. But maybe, maybe eventually again. But guess what, guys? This is what I want to tell you about. Price did nothing. This is what used to happen when Elon Musk mentioned Doge. That, then that, then that, then that. Saturday Night Live. Doesn't work anymore. The man has no power to pump or dump Doge. And if your premise was he loves it and he's going to mention it, it's going to go up. Well, yeah, not good. Not good. <clears throat> not good. Uh, Doge still, I'm, yeah, I would, I mean, if you're asking, I would probably buy it at eight, 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 seven, five, maybe, although maybe it just never goes back up again. It's totally possible because it's overvalued by like 4 billion times. Metaverse layer one cryptocurrencies jump as grayscale updates assets under consideration. I didn't really see this jump on a lot of them. I looked at their chart, but this is cool. Grayscale likes to talk about what they're going to consider investing in. And they put out their list yesterday. And that's what this is really about. Here you go. Algo, AR, Adam, A AXS, Bora, BTT. Y'all are looking at BitTorrent. CVX, DCR, Elrond, hell yeah. Engine, FTM, Gala, Gel, HNT, Hot, IOTA, Rose, Skirt, Sand, Spell, STX, Vet, and Yield, 
uh, guild, 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 YGG, guild game, guild, 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 guild games. Yeah. And so obviously some of those saw some price appreciation, but more specifically, they talked about down below Adam and FTM, which are both doing quite well. We looked at those yesterday. No need to do that right now. But if you're looking for a good starting point to know where the big boys are theoretically considering dipping their um, proverbial investment stick, getting their oar in the water, there's a list. 25 coins that uh, on this list that Grayscale just went ahead and told you they want to dip their ore in. Dip their ore right in there. Uh, yeah, I'm looking over here. Oh, look, another person that I have to uh, block. Bye. Just sorry, I, I'm, I'm on a blocking spree over here. It's fun. Uh, yeah, so... There you go. These are the ones that you probably want to take a look at because Grayscale might invest in them. Have fun. And the top is in. Paris Hilton gives NFTs away on Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show. Celebrity and crypto investor Paris Hilton gave out NFTs to audience members during a recent appearance on Jimmy Fallon's The Tonight Show. Honestly, it's not the top. It's fine. It's good to have Paris here with us. She's terrible DJing, but there she is. Uh, and yeah, this is becoming, I mean... I, I don't even need to harp on it anymore to talk about how mainstream NFTs have become, but it, this is a thing and it's not going anywhere. Uh, not going anywhere, ever. Yeah, not going anywhere, ever. The Beatles memorabilia put on sale as NFTs by Julian Lennon. The Lennon collection series of NFTs includes Paul McCartney's handwritten note for the Beatles song, Hey Jude. NFTs awesome of that. I'd rather own the piece of paper. But there you go. John Lennon's son, Julian, is selling several items of Beatles and John Lennon memorabilia as NFTs, but the fiddle, physical items themselves aren't going on sale. That's a little money grabby. A little money grabby, but there you go. Major mainstream adoption. Twitter is growing its in-house crypto team. Did you guys see this? Twitter is hiring a senior product manager for crypto, according to a tweet by the company's crypto engineering lead, Tess Runyonson. The position is des described as a member of a new team at Twitter that explores decentralized technologies, including blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and Web3. Guys, literally a job running crypto Twitter. Want to help shape the future of crypto at Twitter? I'm looking for an experienced crypto PM to join the team. There you go, guys. Literally crypto Twitter boss. You want to be the boss of crypto Twitter? Go apply for that job. Once again, though, all these platforms are doing is adopting crypto and people think we're going into like a five-year crypto winter and that Bitcoin's going to zero. You do understand that literally everybody is coming into crypto right now. It's a wet dream for those of us who are early and smart. And here's another. YouTube CEO hints at potential NFT features. Susan their Wojcicki. W-O-J-C-I-C-K-I. Wajiki, Wajiki, Wajiki. Wad, Wad Kiki. Wad Kiki. Says the company is looking to help creators capitalize on emerging technologies. Yes, they're going to incorporate NFTs literally, quite literally everywhere. And finally, my favorite story. Trump family discovers Trump coin. Legal action will be taken. That shit's been out there for a while. Eric Trump took to Twitter to warn his followers about a meme coin called Trump coin, labeling it a fraud. There you go. Fraud alerts come to our attention that someone is promoting a cryptocurrency called Trump coin. Simple Trump. It has nothing to do with our family. We do not authorize the use and we are in no way affiliated with this group. Legal action will be taken. Good luck figuring out who did that, finding them and going after it. But yeah, man, we can literally tokenize Anything in this space. Hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your Trumps. They're making a token out of everything out here. Yeah. There you go, guys. Yeah. YouTube can't control scammers, but wants to get into crypto game. Yeah, I mean, like, that was, you know, uh, Elon Musk had that criticism of Twitter. He's like, y'all doing NFTs, but, like, there's literally, like, a spam orgy under every crypto-related tweet. Lumberg fucked our office space. Come on, man. You think you're going to get me on an office space quote? Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Uh, can't sully that honorable Trump family name with a with a stake. I mean, a coin. 
who is the dumbest Trump? I don't know. I'm not going to, we're not going to do politics here, but my vote is definitely for Donald Jr. I know him. I went to college with him. He's not, not a, not a, not the brightest bulb dangling from that Trump tree. That's all I can say. The uh, struggle, struggle, struggle fest. Struggle fest. But maybe, you know, maybe he's matured in the last 30 years. Uh, to judge someone on what you knew about them in college is kind of harsh. I mean, to be honest, my friends called me Pookie because they thought I was like the crackhead in New Jack City. So maybe I'm not the one to be talking. Yeah. Thanks, God. I'm just glad for the mega sale that's on right now. Get it while it's hot. It's like Black Friday up in here. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see what else you guys got here. Uh, you went to college with Don Jr. Yes. Yes. And literally the entire internet and world knows about it, but that's a story for a different, for a different Scott who went viral for different reasons in a different past. Oh, yo, Pookie, don't be talking shit. Yeah, I came back. I stepped it back. I'm sure, he's like, uh, based on what I've seen, he's gotten much more intelligent and classy. FOMO after FOMC. Yeah, I mean, listen, Jerome Powell's going to make his announcement tomorrow. I have no idea what's going to happen. But people are expecting really bad. So even like him reiterating what he said in December could be viewed as good news. You know? Yeah. Uh, what else we got? People just throwing out random uh, Guns N' Roses album names, but I'm here for it. Uh, what else we got? Stacking BT Cheese. That'd be a good, uh, good rap song. Uh, you guys, a lot of, a lot of movie quotes, a lot of movie quotes. Scotty doesn't know. Euro trip. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You guys got a lot. Anyways, guys, I got things to, uh, oh wait, how much of your portfolio do you use for trading? Um, normally my breakdown is 70% holds, 15% cash, 15% speculating, AKA trading. Uh, but if we go like full risk on alt season, I'll, I'll ratchet that shit up to like 50%, but most of the time, no more than 15%. It's all about the market and knowing when to be in and when to be sitting pondy hands. Yeah, it was Matt Damon. Matt Damon saying this guy doesn't know. Uh, I need to up your flair, up your flair. Yeah, guys, the new the uh, the uh, new comment of the day, our new crypto Twitter meme should be that's I want to have my have an oar in that water. Have an oar in that water. Do it. Get an oar in that water, guys. I will see you tomorrow for two live streams. Until then.